If I told you this legging makes 15 crores in business, you probably wouldn't believe me. But oh man, is this true? The minute we uncovered this story, my mind was blown. Because the deeper you go here, the more fascinating this business becomes. This is the story of Meenu Market, a lady from Kaur Mangla in Bangalore who turned her 1 BHK into a 15 crore business. This is the story of how she built Bliss Club, India's favorite activewear for women. How her focus on product innovation and a community-led approach transformed the way Indians look at activewear and how she beat giants like Adidas, Puma and Nike at their own game. Let's dig. The year is 2019. Everybody you know is starting off and being in Bangalore. And Minu has an Excel sheet of all of her own problem statements. And one big problem staring at her is great quality activewear for women. See, Minu is an active fitness freak and believes in constant movement. But clothing has always been a blocker because all the leggings she can find and wear feels like chudi dars. This was a white space. And the more she dug deep, the clearer it became. She saw that in India, you see a group of boys coming together, playing all kinds of sports on the streets. But it wasn't the same for women. No brand solved for women's active wear. And most of these mainstream brands were men first. On the other hand, all these Western brands didn't understand Indian women. Active wear in India was a joke. And most brands just took men's active wear to pink it and shrink it for women. From being a working woman to taking care of children and household chores, women in India don multiple hats and rightly prefer to handle most of these responsibilities comfortably, right? But they never found active wear that they could rely on. In the name of ankle length leggings, they were always offered churidar bottoms, which was sized to the height of Western women. In short, no one was truly designing active wear for Indian women. And this was Meenu's aha moment. Craft active wear for the Indian woman. That's how Bliss Club was born. A bliss to all the problems of their customers. Now, going head to head with Adidas, Nike and Puma wouldn't be easy. But Meenu has a plan. See, if you chart out India's athletics wear market, the dominating players are clear. And going up against them would be impossible. So Bliss Club decided to create a new market. See, Indians are shorter, price sensitive, and prefer functionality. Most importantly, the fabric offered by these brands was not optimal for Indian weather. And so there was a massive white space for clothing that could be worn for yoga classes, but also for chilling in the house, for gym sessions, but also for meeting friends. In short, at leisure. This was Minu's market edge. The fact here is Bliss Club is not really competing with any of these big massy brands, but actually carving their own niche by making athleisure apparel specifically for women and going in depth to solve their problems. The Indian athleisure market is valued at almost 16,000 crores in FY21 and is expected to grow to 40,000 crores by FY25. Comfort is the new fashion and people are moving towards apparel that's comfortable and multifunctional. Plus, catering to a niche market has great advantages. You get to go in depth into the ecosystem, understand your consumer's problems, and then come up with a great product innovation which solves for the massive pent up demand. And that's what Bliss Club did. Minu has a clear target audience, the new age Indian woman. Minu is also clear that the holy grail to crack in D2C is repeat purchases. And the only way to solve that is by creating a great product. Because see, you'll be able to convince somebody to buy your product for the first time with great marketing and ads and things like that. But repeat purchase only happens when consumers really love your product. And that is where the real money is. So Bliss Club understood the Indian woman struggled with three core things. Fabric, fit, and function. And this is where the Bliss Club story started. The brand's first launch and differentiator was the ultimate leggings. See, pockets for women has always been considered a design element rather than a functional need. So the ultimate leggings had four pockets that would carry essentials like phones, headphones or keys. Plus, clouds of fabric, it fits all body types and is comfortable. A rare combination of fit, fabric and function. It was an instant success and built Bliss Club's image as a brand that understands women. Now, instead of coming up with a bunch of collections up front, they started with one hero product. And today, 
they have more than 30 products in the portfolio. The idea is clear, right? Build less, but build something that solves and aligns with the need of Indian women. But in a still cluttered athletic wear market, a product doesn't get you very far. And the differentiator for Bliss Club, sure, is their product. But it's something deeper. It's their community. So I don't say this often. And most Indian brands don't crack it. And we at Growthex would go it right. But Bliss Club's growth truly is community-led. But it's not just events and campaigns. The why to their community-led strategy has a core D2C insight. See, when I say a great community, this is what I mean. At Growthex, we understand the core need for having a solid group of peers around you in your career journey. We are very clear, the only way to exponentially grow careers and businesses is by being in rooms with folks smarter than you. And Growthex is probably the smartest one to be in. With 2200 plus top growth leaders, founders and operators from the best startups in the ecosystem, the Growthex fam is our ultimate inner circle. So for structure to learning revenue-led growths, a great inner circle and exponential career outcomes is what you chase, then Growthex might be the right child for you. The link to apply for memberships is in the comments. And that's about Growthex, but let's see how Bliss Club cracked community. See, Bliss Club was a community before they had a product. I mean, think about all this talk about the need of Indian women, the problems they face, their wants and needs. Where did these insights come from? The community. It took nine months. They launched community in March 2020, and their first product was launched in December 2020. Between March and December, Bliss Club co-created the first offering along with the community of women who loved to move. Now, here's a D2C insight. If you really look at it, almost all products are essentially similar, basically commodities. But the only way to build a large D2C business is by building a strong brand. And so for Bliss Club, that meant one, connecting with their customer, and second, building a strong community. But it's not all forums and talk. Bliss Club uses their community wonderfully. Enter co-creation. If you have a strong and active community who can give you feedback and share real insights to make the customer experience more premium and personalized, you're in a win-win situation, by the way. So getting feedback is obviously the first step. But understanding your customer, processing that information, and then putting it into action is where the magic happens. And Bliss Club did it perfectly be it asking for color advice or fit advice on their stories to asking women what they really want and then delivering it with great products. Now, all of this is great and does amazingly well for Bliss Club. But if you scroll through their socials, you'll come across something very interesting. Community events, free yoga sessions, dance classes, marathons, you name it. So what is really going on here? See, just launching a new product in a cluttered market is not easy. So solving for product adoption here is really the key. So yes, Sanmay, the growth and retention manager at Bummer and a Growthex member since 2022 on how D2C brands solve this. Whenever you aspire to buy, let's say Neemans or Ultra Human or Bummer for that case, you are like, I have to buy but then you go into loopholes and then you suddenly buy it. The best moment is that. The biggest dopamine rush happens there. The second one happens when they actually get the product. And the third one is when they actually use it. See, as Sanmay said, there are three dopamine hits when it comes to D2C brands selling our product option. First, when they buy the product. Second, when they receive it. And third, when they use it for the first time. Now, the weird problem that brands face is customers not using these products that they've bought. Now, here's where the Bliss Club events come in. All of them are short, addictive experiences. But just a very subtle way for getting women to come out, wear their Bliss Club apparel, see how great the product works, and in short, adopt their Bliss Club product quickly. You see what happened here. Bliss Club took this three dopamine hit cycle and shrunk it, resulting in a way better product adoption and then converting their users into evangelists of their brand. And that's how Bliss Club and Venu Margaret went from being in a 1 BHK to a 15 crore company. And if you like this video, please do share it with your network and on your company Slack. Brag about all the insights that you have taken away from this episode and tag us, we brag together. That's it for today. I'll see you next Thursday with a new episode of Wireframe.